Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, or evening, whatever it is. I'm glad y'all are here with me. I am in the kitchen today. I have a plethora of eggs. <laughs> I have a lot of eggs, okay? Um, we're here. It's icy and sleety and yucky weather, and so we're stuck at home. I'm usually giving these away left and right. And I want to just talk eggs today with y'all. I've got lots of egg questions y'all have asked me. And so I said, well, it's time. Let's get in here and do that. We're also going to cook some eggs. The first thing I want to talk about is just boiling some eggs, how to properly boil minutes. The first thing you need to start with is some room temperature eggs, okay? That is important. And that's if you're making meringues, if you're making a pie or a cake or cornbread or another bread, um, anything you're making, your eggs need to be room temperature, an omelet, whatever. So um, these, of course, I have never refrigerated. These are my freshest. And I'll answer that question in a minute. I've got my eggs in here. I'm putting them in here in a single layer, okay? Not stacked on top of one another. I wanna tell y'all, I'm putting a good bit of salt in here. You can boil them. You can have them as mid-afternoon snacks or breakfast or lunch like that. You can slice them, chop them, or mash them with a fork like I do. You can put them in salad, tuna, uh, chicken salad, make egg salad. If you're making a green garden salad for a side with supper, you just grab you a few out of the freezer. I freeze these in a freezer bag, and I can use them anytime I need some boiled eggs. And you know, when you're wanting to make tuna salad, you want to do it real fast, and that's the only cooking time, or chicken salad, or egg salad. So now you can cut out all the cooking time when you have an abundance of eggs like this. And I sure don't want to waste them. And I'm just gonna cover them with cold water. I don't want to start with hot water because I want these eggs to heat with the water. That's the best way to cook them as well. All right, y'all, I'm gonna put these over here. And I'm gonna turn the fire on and I'm gonna turn it on about medium, okay? Because I don't want to just make them bounce real violently, you know, that's what makes your eggs crack. And that salt will help if your eggs do crack in there. It'll help coagulate that little white so it won't just leak all out into the water. So that's really good to add the salt. And they tell us that helps them peel easier as well. That's another thing, an older egg will peel easier because it's gonna get an air pocket in the big end of it, um, only because it's starting to dehydrate a bit, and so it tends to get an air pocket, so it does peel easier once you've boiled it. And these, some of these came just out of the coop this morning, yes they did, and y'all, it's so cold, and I've got to tell y'all this. I'll go down there, and you know, by the time I get down there, I'm cold, and I'm watering, and I'm feeding, and I'm giving them their treats and checking everybody, and the last thing I do is gather the eggs to come back up to the house. So by then, my hands are really cold, and I'll pick some out of the nest, and they are just warm as a biscuit. They're so warm because that hen's been laying on them and I'll just hold them there for a minute because they're like little hand warmers and I love them. I'll even put them in my pockets and come back up with two in my pocket because I love it because it warms your hands. It's so comforting down in that coop and I just, I don't know if some of you have experienced that as well, but I love to do that when I'm down there. I know that's silly, but it's just a comforting feeling. I'm going to show y'all some of my eggs. Um, these are speckled eggs. I'm gonna come around and show everybody, so y'all be patient. Do y'all see all these beautiful little speckles on there? Can you see all these pretty speckles on this egg? Let me see if y'all can. I think you can. Yeah, those are actually speckled little eggs from some of my chickens. I have many chickens. I have Rhode Island Reds, I have Leghorns that lay the white eggs. You know, do y'all remember Foghorn Leghorn in the cartoons? Yeah, well, he was a Leghorn chicken. Yes, he was, or a rooster. But anyway, um, I have those. And I bought these little chickens. They were at Tractor Supply last year, actually, in West Monroe. And they were called Easter Eggers. 
that was the name of these little chickens, okay? I know that doesn't sound very um, proper, does it? They probably have a more better name, but that's what they were being sold as, Easter eggers. But do you see? They lay little green and little blue eggs. Aren't they beautiful? They're just gorgeous, and I love them. And Annie was with me, my little granddaughter, and so we had to have us some blue and green egg layers, and I love them. And I've read many times these are supposed to be more nutritious than the others, but I don't know if that's true or not. And all eggs are very nutritious, so um, I don't. That doesn't doesn't mean anything to me. And then my Rhode Island Reds, they lay these deep, dark, beautiful red, brown eggs. And then I've got some other chickens that lay these pale, almost taupe colored eggs. Um, so I have a variety and I love that. And I love to uh, share this with y'all. And I'm, I'm sharing these all the time with everyone around me. Um, I know eggs have gotten really, really expensive here lately. And I hate that, yes I do. Um, I love this little olive green almost egg. Isn't that beautiful? It sure is, I know. But anyway, uh, some of the questions y'all have asked me about eggs is um, the little blood spot that's in an egg, does that mean it's fertilized? Well, it does not. Um, I've raised fertilized eggs and I've raised unfertilized eggs just because sometimes I don't have a rooster or something that happened to him. And I didn't start out years ago with a rooster at all. I just had unfertilized eggs. And you still get the little blood specks every once in a while. It might be red or it might be black or dark in color. That actually comes from the hen. She may have had a ruptured vessel when she was forming the egg. And that's just a little speck of her blood. And it hurts nothing whatsoever. I stir it in if I'm scrambling or cornbread or whatever that goes right in there is perfectly fine. Uh, and it is, does not mean that the egg has been fertilized or not. I mean, I know you've had to get unfertilized in the store and you still will find a little speck of blood occasionally. That just comes from your little laying hen and it's no big deal and it's still safe to eat and good to eat. So that's one question. Another question many of you have had and I've heard before, even locally, people wonder about the little white squiggly things is what they call them in the egg. Um, I've even heard people say they think that's the sperm, <laughs> but no, it is not. The sperm has long since been used and it's not in the egg. And what those are is little membranes and they're attached to the yolk. And they actually hold that yolk in the center of the egg the best they can, you know. And of course, as it begins to get older, they may break down a little bit, but that's what they're for, is to keep that little yolk centered in the egg. Um, so they're perfectly good to eat too. So stir them on in and enjoy your egg. Eggs, eggs have vitamin E in them, they have iron. They are a super protein food. They have like a gold standard label here in the US for protein. And that is a lot. Um, I said vitamin E, right? They have omega-3s. They're good for our brains. They can help us to improve our memory, to keep our eyes seeing well. Okay, guys, my eggs have come to a boil. So let me find the lid. This is what we do, because we're gonna cook these correct and proper, right? We're gonna cover the pot, and then we're gonna totally turn off the burner or your heat or your fire and I'm gonna go set my timer for 10 minutes and in 10 minutes we're gonna have some hard-cooked eggs but they're gonna be just right so I'll see y'all then yum I just made this French omelet in like a minute and a half okay or less and before I take a bite I would love to show y'all how to do it it is so easy no cream no water, no milk, just egg. The very first thing we need is three eggs in a bowl. And I wanna talk a little bit about our skillet. It does need to be non-stick, okay? You don't wanna to try to make an omelet without a non-stick skillet, you just do not. And I don't typically cook in non-stick skillets, but for an omelet, 
This is my omelet pan. Your pan also needs to be somewhere between seven and a half, eight inches. If you cannot find one that small, you see like my hand is about how big it is, then you can, maybe like nine or 10, but you really, this was the perfect size pan right here. This one is like uh, seven and a half inches. Um, so anyway, and I'm measuring here to here is what I'm measuring. Okay. To make a French omelet, you start with about a tablespoon of butter. And I say about because the French, if they say about a tablespoon, they really mean about two tablespoons. <laughs> and that sounds good to me. And we actually let this butter cook pretty good in the pan. We're gonna try to let you see all that foam. We want that to kind of cook out of there. If you have clarified butter on hand, and you had time to do that, that would be even better. But I don't, so I just let some of those, some of that cook out a little bit to kind of clarify it in the pan, sort of, so to speak. All right, y'all, you see I am whipping some air into these eggs. Just like that. This is a French omelet, so we want these eggs to get a lot of air in there and they actually get kind of runnier than they were, okay? And when I watch Julia, oh, she just do this forever, like that. That's letting your butter get just right. Okay, no water, no cream, no milk, just eggs, okay? Y'all see this pan? All right. In they go. I'll turn my fire up a little now. And we're gonna begin to shape. Can you see my fork? I don't have it down like this, but I have it like this. Let shape that around. I'm semi-scrambling. Do y'all see that? Semi-scrambling. If it gets up on the sides, you get that. Get back down in there and behave. This goes fairly quickly. Back down in there. Okay, you see how it's getting where it's harder and harder for us to continue to do this? Mm-hmm. All right, a French omelet's very creamy in the middle and very good. Something I need to do before we get finished is I need to add some salt and some pepper. And now I need to get this down here. Start rolling down toward the end just like this and flipping this side up. Just like that. Now, I'm going to take my plate. It's wonderful if you can keep one that's warm. I'm going to grab my hand like this, and I'm going to flip him right onto that plate. Beautiful, pretty as you please. And if you want to be just like the French, we're going to put some more butter. There we have it, a French omelet. Let me show y'all the middle of it. Oh. oh my goodness. I gotta have a bite, I gotta have a bite. You know who I learned this from? The very first person I ever watched. I was that little girl that didn't worry about the cartoons in the morning. What I wanted to see was the cooking shows on PBS, you know, the public broadcasting system. I did, and I watched Julia Child make a French omelet, a French omelet, and I thought, I've got to do that. It looked fun, is what she made it look. Let me come give y'all a bite. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay, I promised y'all a bite. Here we go. Can you see, can you see how beautiful, almost creamy in the middle? 
I'm coming to serve y'all now. Everybody be patient and we'll all get to see. So, so, so good. Okay, one more bite. <laughs> one more bite, I know. Mmm, mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. They're so fluffy. They almost taste, they're so fluffy and so creamy because they're just done. Mmm, <gasps> that's our boiled eggs. We gotta stop. They almost taste like they have cheese in them. That's what I was gonna say. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get these boiled eggs. Turn that timer off, I know that's aggravating. All right, guys, I'm going to drain these and I'm gonna run cold water over them and I'm going to peel them and I will see y'all back. One other thing I wanna tell y'all about Julia Child. She could make a French omelet when she started that show without a utensil. She poured those whipped eggs in this little thing and she shook it and shook it and shook it and shook it and let it keep kind of cooking and scrambling itself. And then she just started like that and it rolled down there and she plopped it on the plate. She is the queen, I tell you, she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was gonna make some toast, but I don't wanna stop long enough. Don't lose your patience trying to peel a fresh egg because that little membrane, it's not going to have a good pocket in there on this thicker end. So I just, I just crack my egg a little bit on the end and I try very hard just to prick into that membrane and get some of it. Once I get under it, like I just did, then you can go to town. And it will leave the egg white because we've got that membrane with us, with the shell. That's all you need. Pretty as you please. Let's see, guys. I'm trying to think of all the questions I have had about eggs. Another thing is, do I wash my eggs? And I do not wash my eggs because when an egg is laid, it is covered in a bloom. B-L-O-O-M. We cannot see it, but it's a film on there and it actually is sealing that egg and protecting it from bacteria yeah outside bacteria so I do not wash them and they will last longer if you do not wash them of course and the store-bought eggs I believe they have been washed um, because people want clean beautiful pretty eggs you know and y'all see my eggs I mean these I have not touched straight out of the coop. If you've got a nice clean coop and it's not raining. Now, if it's raining, some of your eggs get muddy, okay? And that's how they get is muddy from those hen's feet. But um, most of them are beautiful, just like that, all the time. You just get a few every once in a while. Um, so, yes, I do not wash my eggs. They last longer. Do I refrigerate my eggs? Uh... Like these, I know I'm gonna use in a period of time. I love room temp eggs because you can use them right there immediately. So if I'm home and I'm gonna be cooking and we're gonna be having eggs for breakfast and things of that nature, I leave some out. They will stay good for about three weeks on my counter. And everybody's homes are gonna be a certain degrees difference, you know. If it's the middle of the summer and you're not air conditioned, then you might wanna just slide them on into the refrigerator. So that just depends, but a few weeks, two or three weeks, you're pretty good right here on the counter. And we do that all the time. Um, the rest of them uh, that I need to give away or I want to give away, I do go on and refrigerate them. Unless it's someone I know and they come by and get them and they don't want them refrigerated, you know, that's usually someone that's older and grew up eating non-refrigerated eggs. And if you put these in the refrigerator, they will last anywhere from four to six months. Okay, guys, I had just put these eggs on this paper towel because I was dipping them back down in that water and they were getting kind of wet and I didn't want a lot of water in our thing. Let me get a fork.
the first thing I do before I go to mashing them all down and mess it up is I save me about four of them for the day. And I want to take a bite so badly right now. Y'all ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See how pretty and yellow, creamy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. So good. All right. These are snacks or breakfast or lunch, whatever, during the week for me. And these I'm going to, I love to, you can chop them however you like to put them in your tuna salad or chicken salad or egg salad or on your salad, your green garden salad. I love, or you can slice them. I love to mash mine with a fork. I don't like any big chunks of egg white. I'm more, I tend to go toward the egg yolks. <laughs> if I want to be real wasteful, I would just, um, well, I'd just throw the whites away. <laughs> but I'm not, I can't be real wasteful, so I'll do like this. And we're going to mash these. And these I will freeze. Yes, I will. I'm going to put them in a freezer bag like a Ziploc. And I can have these anytime. Because so many times I've come down out of the office and want to grab me a bite for lunch. And I love a tuna salad or a chicken salad. And I'll say, no, I don't have time for that because i got to boil eggs, you know. And I'm not going to just boil two eggs. Or I just don't really have the time. So if you've got these to grab out of the freezer... They thaw in just seconds, and they're just like you just boiled them. Get these in here. You don't have to use a freezer bag. You could use a little freezer container. I just love them being in here. And I can use them as I go, all I want to. Sure can. I love eggs, and I don't love wasting eggs. I sure do not. Eggs is good to feed to your little animals, too, your fur babies. They love eggs. These little fur babies, they get eggs every morning because they're rotten. Their daddy cooks eggs, and they get some every morning. Benny Jacks, do y'all get eggs every morning? Come here, Jacko. Let's show everybody. Into the freezer, these will go, guys. I'll let them cool just a minute. Come here, Benny. Are y'all scared? Y'all so silly. Oh my goodness. Show everybody who keeps barking in our videos. Jax, do you keep barking? You want some egg? You want some egg? Oh, he said that was a magic word, Mom. He licked some egg. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all uncomfortable up here on camera? He's camera shy, guys. Jack, show everybody how pretty and handsome you are. Bimmy, come here, buddy. Bimmy says, okay. He says, I'll take a turn. Bimmy. Y'all so silly. Y'all so silly. Look here, buddy. Hey. Are you feeling? Are you feeling? <laughs> Y'all get some camera shot. Y'all make so much noise. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Here we go. Here, Mama feed you some egg. Was that plate making you uncomfortable? He said, yeah, Mama, it was. It was. It was. Is that as good as daddy's eggs in the morning? You camera shy too, huh? Okay. Okay. All right, let's get cleaned up and we'll make something else with the eggs. Okay, again, we've got our little non-stick skillet on about medium low. I'm going to put a tablespoon of butter did you know that butter has non-stick emulsifiers in there? So it's just as good as some non-stick cooking spray and much better for you. So, so just saying, just saying. That's why we start with plenty of butter before we do an omelet. We do not want it to stick. Into this, I have got some little teeny tiny cubed or chopped ham. You put as much as you want in your omelet. That looks pretty good right there. And I have got some green bell pepper, chopped green bell pepper, and this came right out of my freezer bag. Y'all know we put this up before the holidays. Y'all see how fast all these 
these this prep work makes things so great later for us. I'm gonna cook this just for a minute and I'm gonna grab some green onion. I've got a little green onion that we chopped for another recipe earlier this week. Just gonna put a little bit. I'm making this, I'm gonna feed this to John, guys, so he doesn't like tons of onion. You could do purple onion um, or yellow onion, whatever kind of onion you like. You could do shallots, that would be beautiful. I'm gonna cook and let my bell pepper and my onion get softened too and let my ham get a little bit caramelized. I call this an omelet. This is actually called, I think, a Denver omelet. Or you might hear it called a Western omelet. I say it is an American omelet because we're gonna take something simple like that French omelet of egg and we're gonna add a bunch of stuff to it. <laughs> That's what we do here in America. We just add and add and add. Nothing's ever enough, is it? In the meantime, like that French omelet, how we whipped and whipped and whipped lots of air and we even let the eggs get runny on us, okay? We do not do that with this Denver omelet. I'm going to look, put a little pinch of salt, just like I did. John likes pepper, so I will put pepper as well. And now for this omelet, we are going to only stir it together long enough just to let the whites and the yellows come together, okay? Y'all see how I'm not doing... Like before, I was going round and round and round and round, whipping that air in there. Not for this omelet. It stays nice, and it, the eggs keep their integrity, okay? They're going to be just as delicious, but this is how we do this to hold together. Now, here we are. Hope y'all all can see. Pour that in there like that. I've got my fire down here on medium low, okay? Now that French omelet stayed very pale, very pale on the uh, underneath. You know, you saw it was yellow when we brought it out. This Western omelet, Denver omelet, American omelet, it is going to get a little bit caramelized on the outside because we're not gonna move it around this much. We let it just cook just like this. If you want to put a little Louisiana spin on this thing, cayenne, yeah, cayenne pepper. Just a teeny tiny sprinkle. Just to liven it back up. Or liven it, right? Starting to get set. It smells so good. These are typically served more for lunch or dinner then breakfast but if you want this for breakfast with some onions and some bell peppers you go for it i also like to put a lid and try to get some of that steam to come back down and cook for just a moment or so all right that's pretty set if we go any longer we're going to get too caramelized on the bottom I am going to sprinkle some cheese. This is white and yellow cheddar. You do whatever you want to do. As much as you want to sprinkle. And now, we're going to attempt to flip it. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? You see how it's got a little bit of caramelization? on there that's what and also i pick and say here in america we add a bunch of stuff but we don't roll it three times we make it easier too <laughs> oh that's what we do us americans let's see let me find us a plate okay guys and if you did your job right it will slide right out onto your plate doesn't that look good Smells good, baby. Does it look good too? It looks real good. <laughs> it sure does. Cheers. Bon appetit, baby. Mm. I like to call this a cowboy omelet. Mm. Maybe because you a cowboy. I'm a cowboy. Yeah. 
I'm going to wait on you. You go ahead, sweetie. No, I'm waiting. Yeah, I'm going to be polite and wait. Hmm. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> mm -hmm. Look at them, tell mm. them. That's good, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yum. Mm. You see the cheese melting in there? I do see the cheese melting in there. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. He's still hot. Yes, he is. That's good. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. We're going to dance. Oh, he's good, baby. Thank you, darling. Mm -hmm. mm. Y'all saw how fast that was to make? I'm also mm. going to show them that um, egg and hole you cooked us this mm. morning. Y'all stay tuned. John made us egg and hole in the mor this morning. And it's a scrambled egg and a hole, so it's a little bit different. Yep. And he lets the egg run out where it catches that extra piece of bread and toast it too. And it almost tastes like you... You let that butter brown, it almost tastes like um, French toast, oh. egg in a hole. Okay. It's really good, baby. Yeah, baby. John thinks I'm just putting on because he's cooking me breakfast, but it's really, really good. Uh. Okay. Mm. This would make a wonderful supper, wouldn't it? I'm telling you. Piece of toast, some fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or like this, huh? Right. <laughs> mm. Okay, y'all. We've done some eggs today, haven't we? We've talked some eggs. So y'all go get you some eggs. Mm. If you can't find Farm Fresh, you go get you some in that store yeah. and enjoy. See y'all next time. Bye-bye. I think I'm going to take this. What you going to do with that? I don't want to eat the rest of it. <laughs> All right, John, what you making, babe? I'm going to make an egg and a hole. Egg and a hole. Egg and a hole. John does them a different way. He loves scrambled eggs rather than that fried egg in there. And honestly, y'all, I fell in love with it when he did it. So I want to show y'all. Butter. And I love the way you do the butter, baby. You almost let it brown first. Mm. And I taste that in the bread i do it it ends up tasting almost like french toast and i dearly love it i'm gonna take a seat making you a hole yep you used to cut that out but yeah. now you just got to where you just yeah i don't want i don't want to get something else dirty to have to clean it up it's <laughs> a great little tip mm. that brown just a second okay I love how you pour that scrambled egg all around and you make it where even the top of that hole you cut out sticks to the bread that's so yep. cool I love it About how long does it cook on this side? I will take mm, maybe 30 seconds or so and then we'll flip him over. Okay. That's what I love about egg meals is they're really quick and fast. No matter what, what you're doing, they're mm. so fast. You can eat and be, be out the door, huh? Um, on to something else. <laughs> I need to get on your other side. We can't really see good from here. Let me move around. There we go. There we are. Now then. And a warm plate's very important with any egg dish. Warm your plate.
and be very careful because <laughs> it could shatter yeah, on the will, stuff. You will break it. <laughs> well, you don't take just a minute to warm it up. You just keep feeling. Mm -hmm. If you've got an oven on warm, it's perfect for that. Sometimes you do in the oven, don't you? I do. Oh, and it's ready. It's ready. Yay. It's ready. There it is. And it's so good, y'all. That butter browns. And you see how that scrambled egg, it even encapsulated the piece of bread he took out. It's so very good. Enjoy.